But coming up next, we journey through history and examine the region's art created when cultures connect. Stay tuned to find out more. Welcome back to AM Live. From some of Asia's oldest surviving art to an international art fair that takes place right in the bedroom. And we will prove the notion that remarkable art can be produced when cultures come together. And here is this week's episode of Artifacts. Today on Artifacts, we journey into history and see how cultural interactions gave shape to some of the region's oldest art. Then we peek behind the doors of a uniquely modern art fair and uncover a fast-growing trend in Asia's art world. of the exhibition is really to show that the various Asian cultures have been interconnected with each other, have been trading with each other, have been exchanging ideas for thousands of years. In fact, globalization is nothing new. Uh, China has traded, for example, with the rest of the world from the very beginning. But only recently have we begun to understand the crucial role trade has played in shaping the region's art. People have always looked for uh, important products important uh, artistic expressions and they've looked for new technologies elsewhere. This is one of the um, uh, basic principles embedded in civilization as a concept. So globalization is very appealing nowadays because it brings us together, it lets us learn new things, but it's nice to know that this was already happening uh, centuries ago. How these cultures interacted gave shape to the world we currently live in. And this is one lesson Alan feels should be reiterated. Preserving and understanding our heritage and the heritage of other peoples is a way that shows us that we're all interconnected around the world. And I think something very powerful and something very positive comes together when different cultures mingle. This is something we really need to hold on to. Welcome to the unique world of a hotel art fair, a breathtaking experience that offers art lovers a new, innovative way to enjoy art. Unlike a regular gallery, works of art here are displayed casually, inviting visitors to view the pieces as they would appear in their own homes. This hotel space is uh, like a real home, real house style. So. It's a very uh, personal and private uh, style, so it's more uh, delicate. It's like you're visiting the home of the artist. Uh, the, it's more intimate and it's a very, very personal experience because you really, you come close to the artist, you know, and you meet the artist that paints the work that you're going to buy. Creating this cosy environment, however, requires some skill and a keen eye for detail. In terms of space, the exhibitor or the artist would have to work harder in terms of uh, how to uh, place the art pieces. In the hotel, because of the windows, the bed, the bathroom, uh, one has to be a little bit more creative and innovate to see how to place the pieces of artwork yeah, around the room. It's a concept that's rapidly becoming popular in the region, and in places like Hong Kong and South Korea, hotel art fairs now attract a steady stream of young and emerging artists. 이런 호텔이라는 편안하고 안락한 그런 분위기 가운데서 조금 더 대중적으로 친근하게 그런 그림 작품들을 감상할 수 있는 그런 기회를 어, 주는 것 같아요. Regardless of whether you're an art collector, hotel art fairs will have something for everyone. In a fair like that, it's not just one gallery and a solo exhibition. We have many galleries. So you would have a, a bigger crowd, a bigger audience from uh, people who love art, really love art and they collect all. For people who actually over a weekend and they just want to have a, a, a place to go to entertain themselves, it would be, you know, uh, very uh, appropriate. Next week on Artifacts. 
artist Suna Sugi speaks to us about the memories embodied in his latest collection of ink work. Then we enter Singapore's Changi Prison to see how art has helped inmates acquire a new lease of life.